G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome back to the free math worksheet series. This week's topic is not in the area of number facts. For a change, we're looking at equivalent fractions. Uh, this set of worksheets comes from our new ebook, the 10 minutes a day uh, fractions worksheets. I had to think a minute for what we called the book. Um, so here's an example well-known um, process for teachers of maths at least. I think the children find it difficult, but teachers are familiar. Two-thirds equals six ninths. Now, the first thing to say is what I'm not recommending here as we teach this to students and until they become familiar with what it all means, I'm not suggesting that we teach them a process or an algorithm for working it out. Um, I think a lot of children have learned a process but didn't really understand it and so they're confused. Um, so rather than that we're going to help them to understand where the process comes from so that they can consolidate that understanding in their mind um, well before they, they uh, learn the procedure. So the way we're going to do that is to show them examples and give them some tools to help them understand where it all comes from. So I'm going to draw two roughly equal circles and shade in two thirds. So the idea is that we have two circles the same size. Of course you could do this on PowerPoint and so they'd be nice and accurate but this will do for today. So here we have two circles. Both of them have two thirds shaded. We'll have the children agree that that is the case. Now what happens, we can ask our children, if we split the second one up like this so that it's divided differently. Have we changed the amount that's shaded? No we haven't. It's still the same amount of blue shading as was there before but is it the same fraction? No of course it's not. On this side we know this is two-thirds. This one, what fraction is this? Well there are nine pieces and six of them are shaded and those two are equal. By the way I would encourage you to help the children understand that equivalent in this context means equal. They're equal in quantity, they're equal in amount, they're in every sense they are equal to each other these two fractions. So I think the word equivalent can uh, perhaps get in the way a little bit. We can show this with a rectangular region. I particularly like this way of showing it to students. So again we'll start with two shapes that are the same. We will divide them the same. We will shade the same amount. And so here again, of course, we can see there are two thirds in each one. As an alternative for me drawing the lines, I could ask a child to come out and draw onto the second shape and say, can you make this into ninths? And assuming they understand what ninths are and they've got good knowledge of fractions, they'll be able to do that. And again, we can see that two thirds is the same as six ninths. So that pictorial graphical um, strategy, I think, is a really, really good one for helping the students see uh, where these ideas come from and the justification for the method. Let's look at a slightly more advanced example. This is what you might do after they've got the idea via pictures. And that is to start with a fraction such as three quarters for example and multiply it by one. Now students should know that if you multiply any number by one it doesn't change. The answer is the same. So what if we substituted a fraction for one, for example five fifths. This is a little bit um, abstract. It's based on the symbols but assu assuming that the students could understand what this means to multiply two fractions together and assuming they know the method or you could quickly explain it to them. If we multiply the top two numbers we'll have 15, multiply the bottom two numbers we'll have 20. So we can see symbolically, mathematically if you like, that 3 quarters is equal to 15 twentieths using that method. And again of course we could use a picture. I would probably do this after doing the symbols. Again to show the students the justification for the method. And I'll just quickly do this. Try and get this accurate. There we go. And again we can see 3 quarters is the same as 15 twentieths. So there's a fair bit of understanding for the students to develop and it's going to take some time. So I'm speaking quickly on the video but I encourage you to take your time, give the students opportunities to think for themselves, to really 
visualize this and see it in their own minds and so on. On the worksheets, um, at the top of the sheet, at least on the first one, I'm not sure if we do that on all the sheets, but on this first uh, sheet, there's an explanation of the method, a bit like the one I've just shown you on the video. Then a set of equivalent fractions questions where one of the numbers is different, uh, sorry, where one of the numbers is excluded and they have to fill that one in. Then we've got multiplying fractions by whole numbers in both directions, so there's some reinforcement of those ideas. I'll just talk briefly about the process that we want, this, that we will recommend the students go through. So let's go back to our first example. If this was the question the students were facing, and this is a standard question for um, calculating or working out equivalent fractions, we would ask the students after having gone through the processes that I've just talked about, what has happened to the three? What have we multiplied that by? And of course the answer is three. What are we going to do up here? Now I discovered when I was a teacher in the classroom that um, if I didn't insist the students write this down, they would make mistakes and they do all sorts of silly things. So I would insist, write it down, write that down. What's this going to be two times three? It takes them a little while to get used to, um, but of course they'll get it if we uh, teach it to them carefully. So that's it for this week. Um, hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you next week.